Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 14th of July. Delhi Chief Minister launches second plasma bank for COVID-19 patients in Indian capital. India set up a fake Ayodhya for Lord Ram claims Nepal Prime Minister Oli. And US envoy Khalil Zad condemns Taliban attack on National Directorate of Security in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Tuesday inaugurated the national capital's second plasma bank for COVID-19 patients. Kejriwal said the positivity rate and the death rate is coming down, but people shouldn't be complacent. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Tuesday inaugurated the national capital's second plasma bank for COVID-19 patients at government-run Lok Nayak Hospital. Kejriwal said the positivity rate and the death rate is coming down, but people shouldn't be complacent. Delhi has seen a remarkable turnaround with less than 1,000 new infections reported on Monday for the first time since June 1. However, with cases on the rise, several provinces have reimposed lockdowns to curb the spread of COVID-19. The provinces powering India's cases include Western Maharashtra, Southern Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. India, with over 900,000 infections, is the third worst-hit country in the world after the United States and Brazil. The recovery rate has increased a lot. These are all factors, but I want to appeal to the people of Delhi that they are not complacent. ठीक हो गया सब कुछ कोरोना का कुछ नहीं पता कल को फिर बढ़ सकता है तो एहतियात बरतनी हमारी एहतियात जो है वो सबसे बड़ा हथियार है हमारे पास हमेशा मास्क पहनना है इसमें कोई कोताही नहीं बरतनी Meanwhile fans across India have been praying for Bollywood legend Amitabh Bachchan and other members of his movie star family who have fallen sick with the corona virus Bachchan and his son Abhishek remained in hospital in Mumbai while daughter-in-law and former Miss World Eshwara Rai Bachchan and his eight-year-old granddaughter who also tested positive were at home quarantined. Nepalese Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has claimed that Hindu deity Ram was born in his country and not in India. Oli's controversial statement is drawing strong criticism from Indians where the country's Supreme Court last year paved the way for the creation of a Ram temple in northern Ayodhya city where many Hindus believe Lord Ram was born. Nepali Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli creating yet another controversy on Monday claimed the Hindu Lord Ram was born in the Himalayan nation and India had created a fake Ayodhya as his birthplace. Oli's remark comes at a time when ties between India and Nepal are already under stress over border disputes. The statement has drawn strong criticism from Indians where the Supreme Court last year paved the way for the creation of a Ram temple in northern Ayodhya city where many Hindus believe the revered figure was born. He raised a fake boundary dispute and made it impossible for the two countries to talk about it. He has raised the issue of Hindi not being allowed in the National Assembly, of the Indian dress being proscribed. I am sure he cannot wipe out the history. Ties between New Delhi and Kathmandu strained after Nepal claimed three disputed territories of Lipu Lake, Limpia Dura and Kalapani of its own in a new map released last month, which New Delhi also claims. Members of the Hindu Civic Society in Nepal held a protest in front of the Pakistan Embassy in capital Kathmandu 
demanded the construction of the Krishna temple in Islamabad, which was halted after a boundary wall of the temple was demolished by a mob in Pakistan. Members of the Hindu Civic Society in Nepal held a protest in front of the Pakistan Embassy in Kathmandu on Monday over atrocities committed against the Hindu community. Protesters held placards and chanted slogans demanding Pakistan to allow the construction of the Krishna Temple in Islamabad, which was halted after a boundary wall of the temple was demolished. <laughs> पाकिस्तान एम्बेसी को द्वारा जानकारी कराऊं ना कुछ चाहें चाहूं कि त्यों मंदिर सिग्रह बंदा सिग्रह बनाऊं ना को लागी अनुमति दियो उस पाकिस्तान सरकार ले अन्यथा यो हमरो हमरो आंदोलन देश भरी र दुनिया भरी जहाँ जहाँ हिंदू समाज चा क्या ते हैं यो आंदोलन होने चा र पाकिस्तान सरकार लाई हमें दुनिया म Earlier this month, the Islamabad Hindu Panchayat had announced to discontinue construction of the boundary wall of Krishna Temple after it was demolished by a mob. Moving on, Sindhi people including women and children held a massive protest in Pakistan against enforced disappearances of political activists by country's spy agencies and the army. The demonstrators holding posters of missing Sindhi political activists demanded the immediate release of those abducted by security agencies. Sindhis including women and children held a massive protest in Nawab Shah city of Pakistan recently to denounce enforced disappearances of political activists by the country's spy agencies including the ISI and the army. Protesters holding posters of missing Sindhi political activists participated in a march as they demanded the immediate release of those abducted by security agencies. The protest was organized by J.S. Sindh Mutahida Mahes or J.S.M.M., a pro-freedom organization based in Sindh. Human rights activists have long accused that Pakistan army uses torture, enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and political repression as tools to silence voice and struggle of Sindhis. Activists have also been highlighting the plight of minorities worldwide for the past several years to seek help from the international community and human rights organizations. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan government late June increased the prices of all petroleum products by up to nearly 26 Pakistani rupees. Prime Minister Imran Khan has come under fire from residents of Karachi city for increasing the prices by a staggering margin. The Pakistan government late June increased the price of petrol by over rupees 25 per litre and the zeal by rupees 21 per litre. According to official notification issued by the Finance Division, the new prices came into effect immediately. The step was taken in view of the rising oil prices trend in the global market. The move drew nationwide condemnation from people, while some saying that the petrol and diesel prices should have been increased but not by a staggering margin. <laughs> This came weeks after Islamabad said its GDP in the outgoing fiscal year ending on June 30 will shrink by 0.4% instead of an initially projected 2.4% growth. Pakistan's economy has witnessed a steady decline since 2018 when Prime Minister Imran Khan's government came into power. In news from Afghanistan, the U.S. Special Envoy Zalmi Khalilzad has condemned the attack on Afghanistan's National Directorate of Security Office, which killed at least 10 people on Monday, calling the incident unacceptable. The attack has been claimed by the Taliban and was the first of its kind after U.S.-Taliban peace deal signed in February. The U.S. Special Peace Envoy Zalmi Khalilzad in a tweet on Tuesday condemned the Taliban's attack on Afghanistan's National Directorate of Security or NDS office in Samangan province, saying, 
the use of major explosives to detonate a vehicle in a provincial capital is unacceptable and will strengthen those who oppose peace and place into the hands of spoilers. Khalil Zad asserted that all sides must reduce violence. A suicide car bomb explosion and ensuing gun battle claimed by the Taliban occurred on Monday in front of the NDS compound in Aibak city of northern Samangan. The attack killed at least 10 people and three attackers also lost their lives. According to the U.S. Taliban deal signed between the two sides in February, the Taliban committed to avoid attacks in Afghan cities. Monday's attack was the first attack of its kind after the peace deal. Violence is increasing in many parts of the country amid peace efforts. According to a data released by the National Security Council or NSC on civilian casualties, 23 civilians were killed and 45 others were wounded in Taliban violence over the last week. Figures by the NSC indicate that 16 provinces of the country have witnessed 284 attacks by the Taliban in the last seven days. In news from Sri Lanka, after being under a months-long curfew amid the coronavirus outbreak, Sri Lankans enjoyed a wedding exhibition over the past weekend, which had many eye-catching and dazzling wedding products on display. Among the visitors, most people were the ones who were soon to get married and were looking forward to customize their weddings with the help of creative designers present during the show. Sri Lankans over the past weekend enjoyed Wedding Guti 2020, the first wedding exhibition held in the Allen Nation after months-long COVID-19 curfew was lifted in June. The exhibition organized in capital Colombo had many eye-catching and dazzling wedding products on display. Among the audience, most people were the ones who are soon to get married and were looking forward to customize their weddings with guidance from creative designers present during the show. A wedding occupies a very important place in the social life of Sri Lankans. Holding a decent wedding is a top priority for a family and preparing for it is a major responsibility for the bride and groom's families as many items need to be purchased. Sri Lanka has lifted its coronavirus curfew and has refuted reports of second wave of the COVID-19. However, the government has shut schools following the detection of new virus cases as a preventive measure. Schools have been shut across India since late March to curb the spread of COVID-19, leaving millions of children whose families cannot afford expensive devices with no access to education. A 25-year-old college student in Delhi is stepping in to breach the gap in online learning right in his own backyard. After a lockdown was imposed in late March to curb the spread of COVID-19, schools in India were shut down. The government decided to keep the schools closed and move classes online. For those who live in poor neighborhoods, living without basic necessities such as electricity and running water is the norm. But the absence of internet connectivity and laptops and smartphones means children losing out in their education. 25-year-old student Satyendra Pal is stepping in to fill this void by holding classes for his neighbours propping up a whiteboard against a hut in the open air. For the last five years, Pal had been teaching children from the neighbourhood slums under a flyover bridge. But the lockdown meant he had to stop the classes. When online classes were introduced, Pal started getting requests from parents of children. India has begun easing its coronavirus lockdown, which was among the strictest in the world and left millions without work. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button